With Barcelona tying their game, this presents as the perfect opportunity for Real Madrid to widen that gap between the two and make a statement to whether this team is actually capable of winning La Liga. We're going to go ahead and analyze our opponent, Elche, their best players and their best stats, alongside our predicted Real Madrid lineup for this game and our score prediction. Let's go ahead and get started. What's up guys, welcome back to El Merengue Cole. With Zinedine Zidane getting many players back from injury and now finally being at their disposal aside from Eden Hazard and someone else who we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Uh, this presents us a perfect opportunity for him to make some rotations, especially considering that we have a big game against Granada midweek. So this could be a perfect opportunity to, like I said, make some rotations, let players that don't usually get that many minutes uh, rise up to the challenge, see if they can rise up to the challenge, which is what ultimately will determine if the Real Madrid team is actually built to win this whole La Liga. Because we're gonna, this is, these are the games that we're gonna be able to, we're gonna have to depend on, right? We know we can show up to the big games and be players, be teams like Atletico Madrid. Sevilla, Barcelona. But the question is, can we stay consistent and beat the teams that are lower in the table? So tomorrow we're actually going to be facing up against an Eibar team. An Eibar that seems like the perfect candidate for Remedy to go out there and take a bite out of them. But if we've learned anything from this season and from Real Madrid is that no team becomes an easy win for us, right? Every single game we have to grind, we have to fight for that victory. But guys, before going on and analyzing our opponent Elche, I just want to throw y'all a big reminder that if you're enjoying this content, to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and help us reach our goal of 3,000 subscribers by the end of the year. There's not that many days left, but you have plenty of time to go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Okay, and now it is time to analyze our opponent, Eibar. And where are they in the table? They are currently 13th place in La Liga, which is interesting, right? A lower than mid table, obviously. And so when we look at kind of their season, how has it gone? They had a really, really bad start to the season, picking up only one point out of the first four games. So that's one point out of 12 possible points. So that's a very, very bad start. However, ever since they've kind of started picking it back up, they had a huge victory against Sevilla, beating them one to zero, probably one of their best games that they've played this season. And then have gone on to tie other big, big name teams, tying none other than Real Sociedad, who was number one place in La Liga, couple, you know, since Barcelona beat them, and other play, other teams like Valencia, who have actually gone on to tie Barcelona 2-2 two to two today. So if you haven't watched our post-game analysis video from my brother Ricky, make sure you go check that one out. It'll be linked up right up here. So with that being said, Eibar has shown us that maybe they're not the greatest attacking team. They've actually only scored nine goals this season, but they have the resiliency to keep up with the games, right? Stay till the end and at least get a tie out of it. So this is, this presents us another classic game where a team is probably going to defend pretty deep against Real Madrid and it's going to take a lot of patience out of us. And so this kind of leads me to who are the players that we should be watching out for. The number one man I want to name is Esteban Burgos, the Argentinian man that is actually a center back but has already scored three goals and one assist. Not only has he scored a three goals and assists, but he's actually their top scorer of the season. So when one third of your goals have come from your center back, that indicates something, right? But we can't really talk trash when our one of our second top scorers is of the team is Sergio Ramos, our center back. But what I wanted to say is he is obviously a huge influence to their game and their goal scoring opportunities, right? Making up one third of their goals. However, he is not going to be facing us because of the fact that he picked up his fifth yellow card in his last game against Valencia. So we will not have to be worrying about their high scoring center back. But another player we may have to watch out for is Kike Garcia. Kike Garcia is alongside Esteban Burgos, their top scorer with also three goals. So that will be the Spaniard will be the man that Real Madrid will want to really keep an eye out on. And so this leads me to Real Madrid. So what's going on with us? As I said earlier, we have a lot of players coming back from injury or COVID, you know, many things. Uh, for one, Odegaard is finally back. He has had plenty of days to practice, to train, so he should be a pretty good uh, form. We've also recovered Mariano and Jovic, two strikers, so Benzema will finally have a backup, and I will be expecting Zidane to bring in one of the two at some point, because Benzema needs to get some rest. And like I already mentioned, this could present as a perfect opportunity to get rotations, or at least, you know, some type of uh, sub for players that have a lot of minutes. So this is going to lead me to players that are missing in the squad list that were big highlights to me and there's two. Obviously Eden Hazard is still missing. However, the reason why it's kind of a shock to me is because he had actually been pra practicing 
with the team for the previous four days. So you got a full four days of training. And normally we see players get called up after that, after those, uh, after four days of training. So I'm pretty shocked to not have seen Eden Hazard in that squad list. I'm curious as to maybe he felt a little something and so they want to slow it down a little more. I'm not sure, but it's a little bit worrying. And then the other man is Vinicius Jr. who's actually not in the squad list. And so I was trying to find out why, you know, there's been no reports of an injury for him, but apparently he is dealing with some sickness, uh, some stomach bug, a flu, something. It's not COVID, but he's going to have to miss out on this game. However, let's go ahead and jump straight into the potential starting lineup. And like I already mentioned, we have Granada this midweek, who is a uh, much better team than Avar, I would say. Uh, pretty competitive team. So with that being said, I am going to throw in some rotations. I'm not sure if Zidane will actually end up following through with any, but that's what I would like to see. In goal, of course, we're going to be seeing Courtois. I don't think we're going to be seeing much of uh, rotations for him this whole season. In the right back spot, Carvajal. Center back duo, though, I am going to be taking Varane out. I feel like Varane has played a lot of minutes. He has picked up his form ever since the few mistakes that he's shown us uh, a few games back. So Nacho will be replacing him alongside our captain, Sergio Ramos, and the left back, Mendy. I will not be hoping that Marcelo starts this game. However, I would not be opposed to see that for Zidane to bring him in some point in the second half if we have a nice two goal cushion of, or, or more um, in the middle i'm going to be going for a 4-4-2 but in a diamond formation so our center defensive mid will be casemiro and next to him will be fede valverde who's back from injury and tony cruz so we can finally give some rest to luka modic luka modic who actually won the best player of the month for real madrid so congratulations to luka modic and then at that center attacking mid i will i'm going to go ahead and throw out martin odegaard and so I did want to go with a two-striker formation just because of the fact that uh, Eden Hazard, Vinicius isn't there. So why keep forcing a wide formation when you don't have the personnel for it, right? So instead, I'm going to go for two strikers, and that's going to be Karim Benzema lined up against, uh, lined up with Rodrigo. So I know we have Luka Jovic and Mariano that are back, but they have not practiced or played in a quite a bit, and obviously they're not in form. Meanwhile, Rodrigo has been hitting some sort of good form. So I would like to see him a striker, see what he can do up there. I think it would be pretty interesting. And then that final section that we always do, guys, if you're new to the channel, we always here at El Merengue predict our score, predict the score for the game uh, at hand. And so basically you leave it down in the comments. And if you get it correctly, then I will go ahead and give you a personal shout out. And not just that, but you get your name put on these leaderboards right here to enter into the chance to win a beautiful Karim Benzema jersey from this season uh, at the end of the season, right? So whoever has the most uh, correct score predictions. And so with that being said, my score prediction for this game will be a Real Madrid victory, three to one against Eivat. I'm hoping to see Karim Benzema scoring some more goals. I wanna see Martin Odegaard finally pick up a goal with our jersey, that would be phenomenal. So I'm overall very excited for this game. I'm curious to see how the boys will go out there with the additional motivation that Barcelona has dropped some points so they can open up the gap even more. So I'm very excited, guys. If you enjoyed this video, as always, make sure you hit the like button down below. Like I already said earlier, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well and check out all of our other videos. Like always, I will be seeing y'all tomorrow. I hope you all have a wonderful day and a la Madrid.